might want to hold on to something. See ya. Um, what? If you would have told me that a possible Game of the Year contender was coming from the studio that made Evil Within, but was as opposite from a horror game as possible, I would have called you crazy. But yet, here we are. Hi-Fi Rush puts a spin on the rhythm genre by basically mashing games like Sunset Overdrive and Crypt of the Necro Dancer with an anime like Fooly Cooly into one. This is absolutely amazing in every possible way, but how exactly does Hi-Fi Rush play? Well, like any good action game, you have all the usual mechanics you would expect. You can jump, dodge, parry, you have light and heavy attacks, a grapple that can pull you to faraway enemies, but the catch is you can do all of this to the rhythm of the music for bonuses. So basically, unlike other rhythm games, you aren't punished in the sense that you just can't attack because you're off beat, since you never truly are. Every time you attack, it's always on beat. It's just that as you combo enemies with your entire moveset, you are awarded for pressing buttons on the beat. It sounds kind of confusing, but it's very easy to pick up when playing, even if you aren't great at rhythm games. I know these type of games are not my strong suit, and I did struggle with keeping rhythm at the start of the game, but by the end, I was able to keep rhythm pretty regularly without even really trying. Now, battling does have more to it than just basic attacking and dodging. You also have these circles that pop up at the end of combos called beat hits. These allow you to do bonus damage when timing is on point, just like normal attacks, and help raise your battle score and rhythm meter, which both represent how well you are doing and did in battle for bonus rewards. Now, other bonuses to attacking on beat is that you have a reverb meter that builds up above your health. When this fills up, you're able to unleash some devastating special attacks, and these are really cool, and there's a wide variety of them that you're able to choose from in in-game store, but we'll get to that in a second, because there are two more things I need to talk about that are my favorite parts about the combat. So over the course of the game, you will get new allies that join the main character. These allies are able to be called into battle by simply clicking a button. Now each one of them have unique abilities that stand out from each other. Peppermint can destroy energy barriers and deal damage. Macron can knock back weaker enemies, break shields and armor. Then Corsica can put out flames and stun enemies. Now, when you're seamlessly battling to the rhythm of the music while switching between your allies to help you out in different situations on the fly, this is some of the most fun I've had in a game in years. It's just stupid how satisfying it could be. Not to mention, you remember those circles I told you about at the end of combos called beat hits? Well, if you press the button that calls in your allies at that moment, as long as you have the ability unlocked, you will do a devastating combo attack with them that is just a fun spectacle to see in battle. Just remember though, you have to make sure you're switching between your allies, since when you do call them in, they're put into a short cooldown that makes them inactive so you can't spam them. Now finally, my absolute most favorite part of the combat, and one I think some people may not like, is the rhythm parry attack sections. These are moments when you're locked into a parry minigame with enemies. Now if your timing is off, you will take some massive damage to your health and you will be dealing with these a lot as you get towards the end of the game. I can't stress if there is one thing you need to get down, it's the parrying. Definitely if you're playing on harder difficulties. Now don't let this scare you away though. The game does a generous job of helping the player in every possible way it can in these situations, from showing you exactly the pattern the enemy is going to attack with and endless visual cues. But with a little practice, I think most will discover just like me, it's easy to learn but hard to master. But let's talk about this store now. As you progress through the story, you will earn gears that can be used to buy literally everything. New moves for you and your allies, health and reverb gauge upgrades, chips that you can equip that give you passive abilities, which I should note, chips that you buy in the store also require an item called an Armstrong Circuit, which can be found in various levels along with other items that could also increase your life gauge and reverb gauge. Also, the game is very generous with the gears as well. I had already obtained every attack available for all of my characters a few levels before the final, so don't be afraid to go spend them. Now, the store can be accessed in various locations and levels and at your home base, which is where you will be spending your downtime between missions with various things to check out. 
You can talk to all your allies to catch up to see how they're feeling. You have a reward board where you can turn in completed challenges for bonus gears. This also slowly completes a mural in the back of your base with each challenge you do. I think this is awesome and motivated me greatly to do challenges. You also have a board that shows all the secret artwork you find hidden in levels. There's a training room where you can practice combos and moves. You can change the music, and the list goes on. You also unlock some really cool things to do that you can access from your home base after being the game. I won't spoil that for you, but trust me when I say there is plenty to do after beating the game, and you won't be disappointed by the replayability. Wait, snap out of what? Chai, you totally got caught by Corsica. Now I haven't even touched on the characters and level design. The main character of Hi Fi Rush is Chai, who is basically a wannabe rock star. Well, due to some unfortunate circumstances, he ends up teaming up with a girl named Peppermint and a cat named AO8. Bless 808, he's amazing. They basically set out to take down an evil corporation. A few more allies join in, them named Macron, Cinnamon, and Corsica. I'm not going to say any more than that, the story is actually really good and I love the characters. The way they interact is amazing and really stands out thanks to their bold personalities. And the same applies to the various villains of the game as well. You could feel how different each one is thanks to their designs and personalities, which builds towards amazing set piece boss encounters at the end of levels that are very memorable. Speaking of levels, the level designs are top notch. Between simple hidden secrets to platforming, to rail sections, unique use of your allies' abilities outside of battle, and your own, I could have enjoyed going through levels more than I did in this, compared to most games. But with all that praising, did I find anything bad about the game? Well, a little bit. I would have liked to see more variety in how you encountered normal enemies. Now, there were some cool moments, but most of the time you're fighting in a round arena and that could be visually boring at times. Then my other complaint is when you are lit on fire, you're stuck in an animation and have to shake your stick to snap out of it. This felt really awkward with how it slowed down battle. I feel like it would have been better if instead of being locked into this animation, you just took a little more damage over time that wouldn't go away if you didn't shake the stick, but you could choose when to do it instead of being forced to it so you can keep battling if you really wanted to. I know it's a nitpick, but I didn't like it. Outside of those, maybe a little more enemy variety, but honestly, the game is damn near perfect for what it is. It runs flawlessly, has endless amount of charm with top-notch gameplay that is pushing the envelope of what a rhythm action game can be, and that's why it deserves to be up for game of the year. I don't think it will win, but what this game manages to do, it 100% deserves to be nominated, and I fully expect this will be remembered for years to come. Plus, let's be honest, 808 is the best cat in any video game, and I won't hear otherwise. Thanks for watching, everyone.